Tonight, the chilling murder of a young Seattle girl. This was a day when Seattle lost its innocence. Nearly a century later, it still haunts this veteran detective. I don't know of another case like this. Cairo 7 investigates new evidence never made public until now. There are dozens of cold case murders in Seattle just waiting for a break, but it is one of the oldest cases, the killing of a six-year-old girl that remains on the mind of a veteran investigator. Good evening again. I'm Steve Rabel. I'm Monique Minglovin. For the first time, Cairo 7 anchor Dave Wagner opens an unsolved case file from back in 1935, and it reveals a smaller Seattle and details a day when Seattle lost its innocence. My name's Cloyd Steiger, and I retired in 2016 after 36 years with the Seattle Police Department. For 22 of those, I was a homicide detective, and I responded to and investigated some of the more notorious murders in the city that happened over that 22-year period. And the ones that always got to me were the murders of kids. He is a retired detective who has seen the worst of humanity. There is nothing more jarring and gut-wrenching than a child murder. I, I still think of every child murder I ever worked on. But it's a case more than four decades before he became a police officer that still haunts Cloyd Steiger. They are haunting pictures, yeah. A case file that has never been seen by the public until now. I don't know of another case in Seattle like this. Sally Kelly was a six-year-old little girl that lived in the Ravenna neighborhood in Seattle. She was a second grader at the Ravenna school. Uh, she lived with her mother and stepfather, or, who had adopted her. On October 6, 1935, Sally's parents were headed out for the evening and dropped Sally off at the apartment of her grandmother, Edith Coolidge. Edith lived in a brownstone apartment up on Bellevue Court. It was Bellevue Court North back then, Bellevue Court East now, called the uh, Ben Lamont Departments. That's it. Edith Coolidge lived here in apartment 402. After dinner, six-year-old Sally went out into the hallway to play and disappeared. Well, Mrs. Coolidge couldn't find Sally, and she finally, about 7.45, called the police, told them my granddaughter's missing. Hours later, the unimaginable. A little after midnight, some people were walking down by those same garages on Belmont Street, and they found the door that was supposedly locked, and they shimmied it and were able to open it up, and when they did, they found the, uh, the devastating scene of little Sally Kelly dead and hanging by a handkerchief by a latch on the door. It was a shocking crime in 1935. The case made big headlines in, this, in Seattle the next morning. It was all over the papers, blaring headlines with Sally's picture. There's a fiend on the loose in Seattle kidnapping little girls. I believe this was a day when Seattle lost its innocence. This type of thing didn't happen back then. You didn't have little girls killed. I, I don't know how many murders happened that year, but I'm guessing it was less than five. The police file never seen before today reveals the number of people questioned from Seattle to Los Angeles. Residents of the Ben Lamont, mugshots of suspects, fingerprints of those who had previous incidents with children. Documents show King County Prosecutor Warren Magnuson, a legendary Seattle politician, was among those questioning witnesses. There were a lot of private sleuths working on this case. It was big news. And they got letters from a lot of psychics and things like that. If the police in 1935 had the expertise, the forensic techniques, and the science that is involved today, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that this case would have been solved, and quickly. You're just buried in information when it starts, but it, over years, it slowly tapers down, tapers down, tapers down. And I think the last entry in the report was in the 40s, 45 or something like that. Today, 82 years later, the tips have dried up. The killer of Sally Kelly is likely dead. The building she was in, the buildings in the neighborhood, and this garage still stand today from 1935. It makes this a more real crime scene to me. You know, the Ben Lamont still exists. It it's, looks down over I-5. People walk down those halls every day having no idea what happened there. They're, they're silent walls and they hold dirty secrets. During our visit, residents of the Ben Lamont apartments wonder whether the spirit of Sally Kelly lives in these halls. People come because it's haunted. But there's weird stuff that happens in the building. Police have long stopped searching for clues in the murder of Sally Kelly. But Cloyd Steiger believes all of us need to remember how one life and one death changed Seattle. She's a child. She was an innocent, beautiful little girl that was taken. And it's, it's, just, it's just not, it's not fair. It's not just. And she doesn't deserve to be lost in the dustbin of history. 
As we mentioned, the killer of Sally Kelly, likely dead at this point, Floyd Steiger, said there are people he believes should have been questioned but weren't. Again, investigators didn't have the DNA technology that's widely used today that likely could have solved this case. Back then, police only tested suspects for syphilis, and that didn't prove helpful in solving the murder of Sally Kelly. 82 years ago. A it's amazing that, that there is still that much evidence to be able to look at and to talk about yeah, and to unsolved. show us. Sure. What about any family members of Sally Kelly? Might they still be alive? Yeah, that's been very difficult to track down. I uh, did find a woman here in Seattle uh, who is the granddaughter of Sally, uh, Sally Kelly's stepfather. She didn't know about Sally's murder until I told her. She does remember being told something very bad happened to her grandfather involving the death of a child. She was told by her family she should never ask him about it because it was such a painful part of his past. Painful for a lot of people in this community. Yeah, and it lives in that detective, and he wasn't even on that case originally. He wasn't with the police department at the time. Wow. It was long after, you know, long before yeah, uh, yeah. He, he started. Well, her life still matters now. It does. Six year old. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Well, Detective Cloyd Steiger, who spent years reviewing this case, wrote an article explaining evidence in the Kelly murder and what questions he would have asked neighbors and suspects. And you can read his in depth take right now on Cairo7.com.